I'd like to talk about this collection in a few videos, and I'm going to begin with the title page, since that's the point of entry for both the reader and the cataloger. We expect to find basic information on a title page, like the author, date, place of publication, and you find this information, but sometimes it's presented in a very distinctive way. Perhaps the most distinctive thing on the title page of an older Hebrew book is the way the year of the publication is given. I remember the first book I cataloged here. I was doing fine until I came to the date. I couldn't find it. I couldn't find it anywhere. I knew it had to be on the title page, but where was it? Uh, and I, I was totally blocked on this until my cataloging supervisor, Shelley Caston, solved the puzzle for me. She told me about chronograms. The chronogram is a word or phrase, usually a quote from the Bible, perhaps some other sacred text, that relates to the topic of the book. Now, this convention is enabled by the dual function of the Hebrew alphabet. The Hebrew letters also serve as numbers. So the book I'm cataloging is rules for a Hevra Kedisha, which is a burial society. Uh, it's a very serious, sacred responsibility, and it was actually a very prestigious thing. Uh, and there's several quotes from the Bible on the title page of this book. And one of them is from the 24th Psalm, Lift up your heads, you gates. Uh, and you can see that the last word, your heads, is written larger than the others. That tells you that that's the word that contains the chronogram. This verse is appropriate to the burial of the dead since in traditional Jewish interpretation, the gates that are being spoken of are the gates of heaven. So the numerical value of your heads adds up to 571. So the book was published in the Jewish year 5571. In other words, the year starting with the fall of 1810 and then continuing into 1811. Many title pages of Hebrew books are decorated in some way, especially in the earlier years of Hebrew printing. The tradition of putting a frame around the first page of the book arose even before the printing press during the era of the scribes. Beginning in the 16th century, it became common to employ the gate as an architectural frame for the title page, as in these examples, all from our collection. This ornament probably explains why the Hebrew word for gateway, sha'ar, came to refer to the title page of a book. Many of the images on the title page of these books have nothing to do with the content of the book at all, but they're part of the common stock of European decorative images. Now, sometimes this image is almost a coat of arms that identifies the printer. It's known as a printer's mark. Uh, one of the earliest examples of this is the books of Emmanuel Benevenista, a Sephardic printer in Amsterdam. He's got this tower with a rampant lion and a star over it. And for some reason, the printer's mark took off. It was used by lots of other people uh, during his lifetime and afterwards. Uh, other printer's marks are even more elaborate. The most elaborate one in our collection, and I can't imagine one much more elaborate than this, uh, is the printer's mark of Vincenzo Conti of Cremona. He's a Christian printer who employed Jewish assistants, and that was the typical model in 16th century Italian printing of Hebrew books. His ornate printer's mark, seen on this copy of Sefer Tash Beitz, features a helmeted woman, an open book in her left hand, uh, and below a lion, in her right hand a small man bearing a laurel, and below that water flows from a large jar beside some kind of crowned figure. Now the book has no date, but this device was used by Conti in only three three books, to only two other books, all of which were published in 1556, so that's how we, we catalog this one, is being published in 1556. As time went on, Hebrew books increasingly employed biblical figures on the title page. Most common by far were Moses and Aaron and uh, sometimes they're used in conjunction with the gate. They stand in front of the gate uh, the right pillar, Moses, is in front of, typically on the right pillar, Aaron on the left. On this title page, 
Two angels hover above the gate with an image of the universe between them. You'll note that even though this is the 18th century, the earth is at the center of the universe. You can find other biblical images as well. For example, this title page from Michlal Yofi shows King David kneeling and playing his harp, and this is a pose very well known from Jewish iconography. 